It's interesting to follow the vitamin K story. The plant source vitamin K is K1, called philoquinone. And the animal source is vitamin K2, miniquinone. They both activate osteocalcin and matrix GLA protein, which are important for placing calcium in the bones and keeping it out of the arteries, heart valves, and other soft tissues where we don't want it. Now, there's been some large observational studies, like the Rotterdam study, that showed that people with the highest one-third of vitamin K2 intake had a 57% reduction in the risk of dying from cardiovascular disease and a 25% reduction in all-cause mortality. Let me tell you, people, there's no drug out there that can do this. Now, another recent study shows that higher vitamin K2 intake is linearly associated with a lower risk of developing diabetes. That means the more K2 in the diet, the greater the reduction in diabetes. This correlation was found in a large prospective study of over 38,000 Dutch men. The researchers commented that this finding was unsuspected because the foods that contain K2 are the animal source foods that we're told to avoid. Things like cheese, butter, egg yolks, liver, hamburger. Now the study was done in Northern Europe where natto, and that's a fermented soybean food eaten in Japan and is a very rich source of K2, is not part of the diet. So in this case, the source was these animal foods that we're told to avoid. Now, other research is beginning to uncover many other possible beneficial roles for vitamin K2, like preventing skin aging, preventing varicose veins, reduces cancer risk, specifically prostate cancer, and it may prevent age-related brain deterioration. This is powerful evidence that animal source foods, especially fermented foods, are absolutely critical for good health. Our physiology is not designed, nor can it tolerate, exclusion of animal source foods. Now, the vitamin companies want us to take vitamin K2 pills, like MK4 or MK7. This can be an expensive proposition. As I have seen reports where it costs up to $1.5 million to make just one kilogram of vitamin K2. But my biggest concern is that we may be missing something if we substitute a pill for the food. I mean, heck, K2 content of food wasn't even tested by the USDA until 2006. Now, what other important constituents from the diet will they discover in the next decade? It's better to go to the source, eat natural foods provided to humans by our Creator. Be sure to incorporate superfoods and sacred foods that were eaten by all the aboriginal cultures for robust health. Avoid processed foods. There is ample evidence that assaulting through food or food supply through processing or genetic modification can reduce or eliminate all these delicate nutritional factors. With a natural foods diet, you'll get the critical nutrients like preformed vitamin A and vitamin D, important fats, important antioxidants, minerals, and many cofactors. Now, if you'd like to keep getting information that can help you achieve optimal health, please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button above. This is Dr. G. Thanks so much for watching.